In this video, we will talk about such an important parameter as the size of a diamond. It determines the perception of stone in many ways. Imagine a customer that comes to the store. She usually has an idea of the desirable size of the diamond. For example, the size of a diamond in a ring that will look great on the hand. The seller usually tells a fairy tale, that in ancient times people used seeds of carob tree to measure the weight of small objects, because those seeds were very similar in weight. Since that time, diamond weight is measured in carob tree seeds, or carrots. The special chart shows correspondence, between diamond size and carrot. The customer wants her diamond to have a certain size, to look, large. The seller offers, a heavier stone. Does a heavier diamond always look bigger? Do all diamonds of the same mass look the same in size? These 10 diamonds have equal weight, 1 carat. However, the apparent size of these stones is significantly different. The bottom right diamond is the tiniest of the set. It can be completely embedded in the other stones and appears twice smaller than the top left stone. How so? It means the apparent size of the stone depends not only on the mass, but also on something else. Let's investigate deeper in this problem. Let's see, what solution to this problem the diamond trade is offering. Total depth about 60% is considered ideal, for round diamond. Stone with such depth and 6.4 mm diameter has a mass of 1 carat. The cutter can add mass to the diamond, increasing the overall depth of the stone, and therefore boost its price. In such a case, the stone became heavy for its diameter, but its apparent size does not change. Properly proportioned rounds have higher light performance, than too deep, or too shallow stones. The industry uses the total depth parameter for round cuts as one of the criteria whether the stone is well proportioned or not. A range of 58 to 63% recommended for X cut grade. Total depth 65% commands stone to be heavy and results in BG or GD cut grade. The same criterion applies to fancy shaped diamonds. Let's compare several fancy shaped stones and a GD round with same total depth of 66% and mass of 1 carat. Fancy shapes with the same total depth can have larger and smaller apparent size than round. So total depth value cannot define whether the stone is heavy or not. The asher from the shown set of diamonds is heavy, while the oval and pear are not. Does total depth higher than 65% result in poor performance in fancy shapes? Let's look at these princess diamonds of the same mass with different total depths. Central princess stones are better in both brilliance and scintillation. Let's see what is the total depth of these diamonds. The best looking princesses have a total depth of 76%, which is very far from 60% optimal for round. Separation between big, and heavy diamonds based on total depth value does not work. In addition, it is not possible to judge diamond performance by this parameter. It looks like we're at a dead end. But, wait a moment. Do we face this uncertainty just in diamonds? Of course not, this is a common situation when the product measure that defines price does not coincide with how the consumer evaluates the product properties. Imagine a person deciding for a delight but at the same time being very much conscious of calories and sugar intake. Then there is a task to maximize taste and pleasure while minimizing calories and sugar. How to find the right balance? What will help? Pavlova with its 100 grains is lighter than blueberry roll with 120 grain serving. Looks like a lighter guilt. But it is more charged with calories and sugar. And if at the same time it is an unmatched delight for you, then should be no guilt to go for it on a really special day while cutting on your calories and sugar somewhere else. This is logical because indulgence was the main goal to have a treat, so the goal is reached at its maximum. It is important that provided information on calories takes away the stress of uncertainty because you know exactly how many calories every delight costs you and you make a choice, which is right for you in this situation. Our situations and preferences are different, so are the choices. Those who go for an intensive outdoor activity also have to balance their food benefits. Like taste, high calories and low weight. So, they will focus on dried food, choosing the favorite flavors and energy values versus burden to carry extra weight. In both situations it is important to have the key information which let you to maximize your satisfaction with the most relevant option. The same is true for a diamond choice. What kind of data will help to make your own best choice? Let's compare two diamonds, cushion and round of the same mass of one carat. We see that they have different apparent sizes. Now we will decrease the mass of the round until it becomes of the same visible size as the cushion. As a result round will be 74 points. 
the cushion turns out to have lower calories than the round, it needs more mass to give the same apparent size. The parameter that shows the calorific value of a diamond is called spread. The absolute spread shows the difference between the mass of the current diamond and the mass of the round Tolkovsky with the same area. In the current case, it is minus 26 points. The relative spread shows the relationship between the mass of the current diamond and the mass of the round Tolkovsky with the same area. In the current case, relative spread is minus 35%. Negative spread tells us that the cushion has smaller apparent size than Tolkovsky of the same mass. Let's consider 1.01 carat marquees with positive spread. Round with same apparent size will be 1.29 carats. The absolute spread is plus 0.28 carats and shows the difference between the mass of the current diamond and the mass of the round Tolkowski with the same area. The relative spread is plus 22% and shows the relationship between the mass of the current diamond and the mass of the round Tolkowski with the same area. Spread within one diamond shape may significantly vary, from positive, as you can see on left oval with relative spread plus 15% to negative, as shown on the right oval with relative spread minus 14%. You can check this collection on Cutwise using QR code, or link in the description under this video. Let's go back to the collection that we saw earlier and check how spread can be used there to compare fancy diamonds between each other. By spread we can easily see which stones are large, and which are, heavy, and by how much. You can check this collection on Cutwise using QR code or link in the description under this video. We saw that the spread works well for fancy shapes. Can it be applied to round diamonds? Which parameter better shows the difference, total depth or spread? Let's compare these two stones with a similar total depth of 61%. The diameter of the left stone is 6.39 mm while the diameter of the right stone is 6.46 mm. Can you guess which of these stones is 98 points, and which is 1 carat? Based on same total depth and difference in diameters we may assume that the right one is 1 carat and the left one is 98 points. Let's check the spread of these stones. Actually 1 carat diamond is on the left. It has spread about minus 4% and appears like 96 points Tolkowski. While 98 points is on the right with spread plus 1.2% and appears the same as 99 points Tolkowski. So it is preferable to use spread parameter over total depth for both fancy shapes and rounds.